Chapter 7 is all about chemical reactions. And we know that a chemical reaction means at least one new substance has been made as a result of the reaction. So how can we tell in the lab if a chemical reaction has actually taken place? Well, one of the things we look for is heat. Remember, reactions are either endothermic or exothermic. Uh, we can also see a new phase being created. such as in this picture where we pour a yellow liquid into a colorless liquid and we form a red precipitate that this, if we let this settle by gravity, this would be a solid on the bottom of the beaker. Uh, the new phase could also be bubbles. Uh, for example, if you react a solid with acid, sometimes you'll see bubbles being released and those bubbles turn out to be carbon dioxide. If you have a microscopic view, you can tell in this picture we have octane, which is one component of gasoline, being reacted with oxygen. So it's a combustion reaction. This happens inside a car's engine and what comes out is carbon dioxide and water. So the microscopic view, we can see the atoms have changed how they are bonded. The problem with these is we're talking right now just about general evidence, but it's not conclusive. For example, you see bubbles forming in a pot of water when you boil the water. However, that's not a chemical reaction. The only thing that's happening is liquid water is turning into steam. So bubbles might show you a chemical reaction, but they may not. When we write a chemical reaction down on paper, we have to obey the law of conservation of mass. Which states the total mass of everything before the reaction has to equal the total mass of everything after the reaction. And what that means if you're looking at it microscopically is the number of each atom, which is for each element, that number has to be the same on the reactant side and on the product side. So for example, here is a chemical reaction in word form. We're going to burn propane gas so we're reacting it with the oxygen in the air and we make carbon dioxide and water vapor. So propane is not a substance that you know how to name in Chem 100. So I would tell you that propane is C3H8. And we're told that that's a gas, so we're going to include the phase parenthesis G for gas. We're burning it, so we're re we are reacting it with the oxygen in the air. And remember, oxygen is one of the diatomic elements, so it's not just O, it's O2. So those are our two reactants. And then on the product side, we're told we make carbon dioxide, so that's the molecular compound CO2, which is a gas, so is the oxygen we're reacting the propane with. And we also make steam. So steam, H2O gas. Now, the way that I have this written right now, if we count atoms, for example, carbon, we have three carbon atoms on the left side, but there's only one carbon atom on the right side, which means this is not following the law of conservation of mass. 
So after we write down all the reactants and all the products, we then have to balance everything. And when we balance, we never change subscripts. For example, I can't make carbon dioxide into C3O2 to balance out my three carbon atoms on both sides. The thing I can change is the number out in front, which is called the coefficient. So I'm going to put a little line in front of each chemical to change the number that gets multiplied by the chemical formula in order to make everything balance on both sides. For a problem like this one, the one element I would not want to start with is oxygen because oxygen shows up in both of the products. So I'm not going to know which chemical I should be changing, but carbon is a good one to start with because carbon only shows up once on the left and it shows up only once on the right. So I know I have three carbon atoms on the left. Right now I only have one. So I need to put a coefficient of three in front of the carbon dioxide to balance out three carbons on both sides. Now this three does affect the oxygen. So we're going to come back to that. But when you put a coefficient, it affects every chemical in the formula, every element in the formula. Next, if we balance the hydrogen, eight hydrogen on the reactant side. Right now I have two hydrogens on the product side, so I need to multiply by a factor of four to balance out the hydrogens. The one we left for the end, oxygen, we have three carbon dioxides. So this three in front means we actually have six oxygens from three molecules of carbon dioxide. And then we have four waters. Each water has one oxygen, so that's four more. So that's a total of 10. So to make the oxygen balance, we need to multiply O2 by a factor of five. Just like when you're writing subscripts, if the subscript is a one in front of the propane, we end up with a one. You don't include that. If you count and double check, Whenever you have the balanced equation, you should see that the total number of every element's atoms is the same on the left and on the right.